are the future, we are the dream We are the nation, we are part of this Yes, we are so amazing, that's the least we shall be At the heart of the nation, changing history How can they say that we are finished, we have just begun Hello students, welcome to General Studies English. I am Idugu Odebodi, your anchor man at this particular time. Today, I want to take you through tense, aspect, and concord. Tense, aspect, and concord. These are fundamental concepts in grammar and your knowledge of grammar is tested based on your understanding of tense, aspect and concord. Then I may ask you what do you mean by tense? What is an aspect? And what do we mean by concord? In the course of this lecture, we shall be providing answers to these questions. The first aspect of the course is the English tense system. And as displayed on the board, the English test system is marked to show that time and action takes place. I take that again. The English tense system is marked to show that time and action takes place. And according to Randolph Quackettor, time is a universal non-linguistic concept with three divisions, past, present, and future. Therefore, we may establish that three times corresponding to three tenses exist in English, namely the present tense, the past tense, and the future tense. If you look at the present, I see you. The past, I saw you. And the future, I will see you. See is a verbal element that indicates the present. So is a verb which indicates the past tense and will see actually captures the future. Distinction with other language. Unlike the English language, tense is marked by adverbial elements in African Yoruba language. Let's consider this statement. Morielano, I saw you yesterday. Morieloni, I see you today. Momarielola, I will see you tomorrow. Because Yoruba is a tonal language, it's placed upon words. Without the adverbial element, meaning is lost to the decoder totally and the sentences become ambiguous, as in Morie, Morie, Momarie. Therefore, it is imperative if we want to understand the meaning of re, re, re in this context, it is imperative for us to have the adverbial terms Morie, Lano, an adverb of time indicating yesterday. Lone, Morie, Lone, Today, I see you today. Moma Ariel, Riel, Lola, we see you tomorrow. So it is the addition of those adverbial tags, Lana, Loni, Lola, that actually guide us in decoding that the first re indicates yesterday, the second re indicates today, and the last re indicates tomorrow. English does not require the adverbial elements to indicate its time. 
since it sends traces time C present saw past and we see tomorrow or future so far we've been able to establish that we have three tenses in the English language the present tense the past tense and the future tense the next question is what is the aspect of a verb? the aspect of a verb is determined by whether the action is ongoing or completed aspect typology there are four aspects in English first is the simple aspect which is also known as the indefinite aspect second is the perfect aspect which is also known as the complete aspect third is the progressive aspect which is also known as the continuous or continuing aspect and the last one is the perfect progressive aspect which is a combination of completeness and continuity at this juncture i need to expatiate on the fact that when we talk about perfect or perfect aspect we need to understand that perfect in this sense denotes completeness you have started something recently and then you have finished you've completed the action that's what I mean by perfect not really something that was done pro probably yesterday or the previous week perfect does not indicate the past tense it only indicates completeness examples of aspects here are some examples of the aspects in sentences a mood that table simple aspect no emphasis of completed or ongoing action he had moved the table by the time the pupils shouted perfect aspect action completed he was moving the table when the pupils shouted progressive aspect action ongoing he had been moving the table before the pupils shouted perfect progressive aspect action ongoing but then finished or completed these sentences are all in the past tense but they all have a different aspect note that aspect is needed to indicate whether the action was ongoing or completed here is a small diagram for you tense we have the past ed we have the present and then that's the suffix x and then the future will or shall then aspect r plus en progressive b plus ing and then we have the modality which has to do with an aspect of the future shall and should and then will and would then i have another diagram here for you that is tense in relation to time past present and future and then truth in relation to modalities that's talking about will and would and shall and should and then the aspect i have given you uh, three aspects that i have the perfect i have the progressive and then the perfect progressive perfect r plus en and then progressive b plus ing and then perfect progressive you have r plus b and then plus en plus ing aspects in past present and future tenses aspect applies equally to the present tense and the future tense the following sentences indicate how the different aspects are formed in the present past and future tenses one the simple aspect which is the indefinite aspect example simple past tense she ate simple present tense she eats 
simple future tense, she will eat. And then two, the perfect aspect, that is the completed aspect. Example, past perfect tense, she had eaten. Present perfect tense, she has eaten. Future perfect tense, she will have eaten. And then we go to the third aspect which is the progressive aspect, that is the continuous aspect. At times we call it the continuing aspect. Now, the examples are also there, I have about four of them. Perfect progressive tense, she was eating. Present progressive tense, she is eating. Future progressive tense, she will be eating. And then the fourth one, the perfect progressive aspect. Here I also put about four examples. Then the first example, perfect, past perfect progressive tense. I take that again. Example one, past perfect progressive tense. She had been eaten. Present perfect progressive tense. She has been eaten. Future perfect progressive tense. She will have been eaten. So far, we have generated 16 corresponding tenses with our aspect. And therefore, we may be able to pawn on tense and aspect in 16 corresponding ways as follows. We have the present tense class, we have the past tense class, we have the future present tense class, and then we have the future in the past class. Now, under the present tense class, I may say first to say present simple tense, she eats, Present continuous tense, she is eating. Present perfect tense, she has eaten. Present perfect continuous tense, she has been eating. And then you have the past tense class, so you say the past simple tense, she ate. The past continuous tense, she was eating. The past perfect tense, she had eaten. The past perfect continuous tense, she had been eating. Then we go to the future, the future present tense class. The future simple tense, she will eat. The future continuous tense, she will be eating. The future perfect tense, she has eaten. The future perfect continuous tense, she will have been eating. Then we move from that to the future in the past tense class. The future in the past simple tense, she would eat. The future in the past continuous tense, she would be eating. The future in the past perfect tense, she would have eaten. The future in the past perfect continuous tense, she would have been eating. Functions of tense and aspect. At this juncture, we should understand that we don't just use tense, so we don't just learn tense for learning sake or learning about aspects for learning sake. Tense and aspect perform functions in our grammatical construction. I take this one after the other, the present simple tense. The present simple tense is used for true statements, description, and habitual actions. For example, we say, we eat every day. The boy is tall. The present simple tense is also employed in literary critiques or literary criticisms. For example, Arrow of God is a novel by Chinua Achebe. The plot is about Ezeulu and his clan. The strength of the book lies in its ability to incorporate proverbial sayings. Also, the present simple tense is used in outdoor games like footballing. For instance, the referee blows his whistle. The game starts in earnest. The backman passes the ball to the center forward. He moves, he moves, a shot. Oh no, the goalkeeper catches the ball and the ball is jumped for. The present simple tense is also used for permanent truths. For example, sea never dries. The sun rises in the east. God is the neighbor. Finally, the present simple tense is also used synonymously with the future tense, as in the meeting owes or we owed tomorrow. You can say the meeting owes tomorrow or the meeting we owed tomorrow. 
The president travels or will travel abroad next month. We can say the president the president travels abroad next month or the president will travel abroad next month. The present continuous tense. This is used to express action that is in progress or continuous. For instance, I am writing a book. She is eating rice. The present continuous tense can also be used for future expression as in the senior students are convoking next week. The matriculation ceremony is taking place tomorrow. This tense can as well be used to indicate regular habits or habitual activities, as in, mommy is always talking because she is a trader. Daddy is always praying because he is a clergy. The present perfect tense. This tense is used to express an action that has been completed or a task that is just finished or concluded. For example, I have finished copying my note. I have written my note. He has dug the hole. The present perfect continuous tense. This is used to express an action which has commenced in the past and is still in progress now. For example, he has been writing the notes since morning. Obama has been campaigning for seven months. The past simple tense. This is used for an action that took place in the past. I went to the cinema yesterday. We defeated our opponent in a football competition last week. The past continuous tense. This tense indicates a past time event happening at a particular point in time. For example, I was sleeping when you called. They were going to school at half past seven. The past perfect tense. The past perfect tense. This is used to indicate chronologicality in series of events in the past. That is, it demonstrates which event happened before another one in a statement. For example, the house had got burned before the fire brigade arrived. The Christmas carol had started before the clergy came. The past perfect tense is also employed in expressing conditional statements. For example, if, we, if he had known, he would have read his book. If he had known, he would have read his book. The past perfect continuous tense. The past perfect continuous tense is used for expressing both chronologicality and continuity simultaneously. It tells which events happen first and demonstrates its continuity. For instance, the military had been governing Nigeria before the civilians arrived. The teacher had been writing for almost an hour when the captain sneaked in. The future simple tense. As the name suggests, the future simple is used for actions meant for future. For instance, I will see you tomorrow. He will defend his title next week. The future continuous tense. The future continuous tense indicates the particular period an action will commence and simultaneously continue after the commencement. For example, John will be writing his first paper by 7 a.m. tomorrow. 
we shall be listening to news broadcast by 6 o'clock this evening. By this time next month, Daddy will be traveling to the United Kingdom. The future perfect state. This indicates the period and action will be completed in future. Example, by Saturday, he will have worked for a week. Another example, in two hours time, he will have completed his sermon. The future perfect continuous tense. This indicates the formation of a period of a continuous activity in the future. Note that this tense is rarely used. For example, the lecturer will have been lecturing 30 years by next month. The lecturer will have been lecturing 30 years by next month. The president will have been ruling for 8 years next October. The president will have been ruling for 8 years next October. Concord. Concord is a technical term used to denote formal agreement in person, number, gender, or terms between different elements within a sentence. The principal sentence elements that are largely affected by concord are the subject and the verb, which undergo morphological changes in the process of sentence modification. Therefore, concord simply is concerned with subject and verb agreement in a sentence. I take that again. Notice that concord is concerned largely, mainly, with subject and verb agreement in a sentence. Thus, the primary principle to be followed in Concord is a singular subject must take a singular verb, and a plural subject must take a plural verb. Example. Child cries and man walks. Here we have both the singular subject and the singular bit. We can say a child cries and a man walks. Child there indicates one single, a single person. And cries, that is a singular bit. The same thing goes, or the same that goes for a man. A man walks. Or you say, one man walks. In the second example, children cry and men walk. Children cry and men walk. Children is a plural noun, and cry is a plural verb. Men in that order is also a plural noun, while work is a plural verb. This therefore establishes our rule that a singular subject must take a singular verb, while a plural subject takes a plural verb. Singularity and plurality, noun and verb. In your elementary days, you might have been taught that anything in quotes, anything that takes the inflection or inflections S or ES or EN is plural. This is not true totally. Probably your teacher then were actually trying to say that a no inflects to form is plural. That is, when you are dealing with nominal elements, you are dealing with nouns, you can say the singular or the word or the noun boy is boy and the plural is boys. Therefore you say singular, boy, plural, boys. 
singular, church, plural, churches, singular, child, plural, children, singular, of, plural, object. But when it comes to verb, a verb inflates to form a singular. Therefore, whenever you have your suffix S or ES added to a particular word on that verb that denotes singularity, that's a singular verb. On that now, if a word inflects, it indicates plurality. Now we are looking at verbs. Consider what you have on board, singular, plural. A boy goes, some boys go. Therefore, we may say that the singular of that particular word, that is that particular verb, the singular is goes, and the plural is go. That's why we say a boy goes, while some boys go. Furthermore, consider it, the singular verb it. The plural is it. She eats. They eat. Also, we have flies, singular, and fly, plural, on the bed, and insect flies. Insects fly. Notice that when a verb in place with suffix s or e is, the verb becomes singular. The absence of suffix s in a verb indicates the plural number. A boy goes, some boys go. We have other grammatical rules of concord. And quickly, I'm going to, to take you through 20 of such grammatical